It is November the 20th, 2021, and you're listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode of The Future of Photography. I'm Chris, there's Adrian and Imar. Hello. 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 Jeremiah is off to work. I'm very so. pink today. Jeremiah. Yeah, you have you have an interesting shade of yeah. color there. Anyway, I don't know what that's about. Uh, virtual makeup. How about that? Go with the flow. <laughs> um, Jeremiah is out working, <laughs> so he, he can't be here. But uh, in honor of him missing, I made him a ghost. He's slightly you translucent. made him a ghost. Oh, He's what, slightly translucent on the screen <laughs> in the video. <laughs> and if you're not watching this on video, well then. You're missing out on some crazy just... special effects. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Cutting edge stuff, this is, isn't it? <clears throat> well, speaking of that, what a nice segue. Speaking of cutting edge stuff, um, this was one of these episodes where um, we didn't really have something lined up. And I asked around in the group during the week, what are we going to talk about? And Adrian tossed this over the fence to me. And <laughs> it's like, here, <laughs> how about Sorry, that? <laughs> It's been a busy week, but I saw this yeah. and I thought that this is something we could geek out I'm, on. It's definitely a future tech thing. Well, and it the could be question fun. is how how geeky is how, does it have to be? Um, and I do not, <laughs> I'm not complaining whatsoever because I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole going down that. I thought uh, you might. No, I think so. <laughs> oh, in, geeky, in a nice way, geeky. I thought you might. <laughs> yes, um, it is about NLOS NL photography. Hmm. No line of sight. That's what NLOS stands for. So, mm. you know how you usually... Sometimes known as BLOSS, beyond line of sight. Or so BLOSS. I, yes. <laughs> it's easier it's easy, which is easier to say, to be fair. It's lovely. Mm. It, it rolls off the tongue better, <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> BLOSS, and loss, whatever, and L-O-S <laughs> photography. So, um, this, is, this is the thing. When you take a photo of something, you, you're supposed to have line of sight to see it. Because we use visual light to take photos, and... Uh, for years now, scientists have worked on different methods to be able to basically look around corners, right? That's pretty much what it is. Mm. Um, and, and they do this, I'm not really sure how they do it. Here, here's, a, here's an example from 2019 of uh, <laughs> the pictures that you get. And this is three-dimensional, so you get like, um, this is a shelf with some the sculpture in there. And... Um, it's actually a video. I can just play this while we talk. I did. I did watch a bit of that video actually. So it kind of, I did it kind of describes how they they so they set up a little a little diorama effectively, just yeah. something to model, you know. Um, and then they have a camera that cannot see the thing that they've set up, but they bounce light. I sh no, not light. Well, some, it, so, it, so, some electromagnetic. Photons. Some electromagnetic. It's photons. Right? It's light. It's light. The interesting <laughs> thing is the way they apparently do this is just imagine. Let's let's break this down to something uh, easier to understand. Let's say you have a you have a lake, and you're tossing in a stone shaped in a certain way. And what you would be, what, what what you'd have to do to find out the shape of the stone is to look at the waves that the stones reflect off of the edge of the water. That's pretty ah, much what they're doing, and, right? And they're, interpret those. They, they're looking at those waves that come back from from Life some waves. other surface, like bounce of something, and then yeah. they reconstruct using some interesting methods. They reconstruct what the original shape of the thing was that created those waves. Which, if you think about it, is crazy clever. It's completely it? crazy. Mm. <laughs> this is this is wild. Because um, yeah, it's been going on for a good while, though, hasn't it? Like when I kind of start to look into it, the first yep. kind of reference I saw to it was about nine or ten years ago. Yes, yes. So, so the first versions. Yeah, that's that's how yeah. pretty much how far back I've seen stuff of that showing mm. up in some feeds here and there so mostly Incredibly nerdy stuff. complicated <laughs> it is but on the other hand um they mm. they compare it with what we're doing when we're looking at structures in the ground by using a ground penetrating radar or uh sonar mm. whatever they use they they are able to reconstruct shapes down there be it 
because they're searching for oil or be it because they're searching for minerals or archaeology um, related mm. stuff. And they can see that, that I can get three D right? shapes. There. Yeah, but I totally the, get that because you can triangulate with that. Because when they do that, like with seismographs and stuff like that, yeah, they that they, they can have multiple transmitters and multiple receivers. So you can kind of see how they yeah you know, they could triangulate uh, to to f- figure out the shape of stuff. But this is not that is it. This takes it. This is just sort of one reflection. It's not. No, it's, no, it's all not. coming at you from one one area. So well, here's here's the article that kind of uh, triggered this episode, and it's in Petapixel, and uh, it's of course still lab lab size, so it's not something that you can go out and buy, um, and. They, they explain this here in, in some diagrams that I found interesting. Um, they are illuminating that with a, with a light source that bounces off of some intermediate wall. So you have this one light source and then you have the camera and that, that what the camera detects coming back from the thing around the corner that gets scattered on a wall. So the camera looks at that scattering on the wall. That's the waves that's looking at. And it's also splitting out kind of a reference beam and, and, and feeds all that the sample beam, which is the one that illuminates the subject around the corner. And the uh, cameras, um, the waves that the camera sees, plus the original picture that the camera sees that is some reference beam and puts that into some w- wild mathematical framework. It doesn't make sense if you It if you is don't crazy. See the, Do you know what the thing is? One around. of the things that's interesting about this is so that your camera now shoot, has to shoot out light or at least cause light to happen, um, which, which of course it does. Well, my iPhone use, does that. That has a light a built in. Yeah, yes. Right? But, but it, it, to, to, to actually create the image, not, not to just enhance the image, I suppose, which you'd get you know, with, with a, a, a speed light or a strobe light or whatever, but to actually have it at all. Do you know what this reminds me of? For, su- for some reason, this reminds me of being at school and learning physics at school. And we learned, you know, learned how th- things like you know, uh, with light at school and you'd, you'd do experiments yeah. with a periscope and you'd learn about prisms. And one of the things that my physics teacher always hated, uh, and, and he said, when you draw the the diagram of like the periscope and how the light is, do not put the arrow pointing out of your eye. Your <laughs> eye does not shoot laser beams, right? The light goes into your eye, right? And that's how that works. And 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 just just thinking now that that di- those diagrams, you're just saying it's like there's got to be a diagram somewhere where the light comes out of the camera. <laughs> like well, in bounces off stuff. In, in what it reminded of... me of, what, the more I looked at it was, and I put a clip of it into the notes, was um, Mike TV and him being beamed. In, uh, for Charlie and the Chocolate into, Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't uh, think they're actually, doing... Actually, my pick of the week, put it straight in my head. So if you watch that, you'll get what I mean. Perfect, exactly. perfect. Now, interesting enough, and, and of course, of course, this is kind of a physics class where three people who do not fully understand this, I would presume, <laughs> uh, try to explain something. So we, we're only... That's an understatement. Well, we're extrapolating from what we see. There's there's two different ways they do this or they can do this. And by the way, this is the latest iteration of this whole thing. Uh, the one is by what they call imaging around corners, where they bounce this off a wall and then it bounces back off a wall and gets captured by the camera and gets mathematically discombobulated. And then the other one is scattering through a medium. Like you, they can pretty much look behind a wall through that wall if uh if that wall lets some of the light through so if it's one of those special walls that's made of glass perhaps no no not quite that i think i think what what they are looking at and by the way they they say that they can do this now with sub millimeter precision so it wow. is fairly high resolution um and and and, and i mean we, we can sort of sp- sprinkle in the what does that mean for the future of photography kind of thing because that would be an application um that they specifically mention here in medicine this is this is, this is superman mm. stuff right this so is Im- x-ray Im- vision if you can look through walls mm. I mean, imagine what's... imagine looking the, into you someone know, imagine combining imagine combining this with like heat sensing camera so oh, that yeah. like if just blend those two things together and <clears throat> it's crazy and yeah. and uh, the, the 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 example here is looking at at uh at the heart looking at other things without using x-ray with just regular light because that scatters through 
your skin and if you ever shown uh, if you've ever been shining a, a a flashlight through your hand you know that that stuff is kind of yeah. translucent yes right? that's yes yeah, you yeah. can, you can yeah. do that x-rays are slightly more dangerous though aren't they that's what i mean so yeah. so well, just wouldn't imagine, it be great yeah <laughs> just mm. imagine being able to do this without x-ray with regular light mm. uh, so that would be cool so so that would, be, that, that would be cool then you then you're into total recall territory aren't you of course the, yeah. the, 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 origi the original version of total recall not the 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 dubious remake um yeah. but the original total recall with arnold schwarzenegger has that scene in the in the space pool where he walks through um uh, uh, uh yes. effectively an x-ray machine but the whole of yeah. the wall of the x-ray yeah. machine is the screen for it <laughs> like they, walking through an airport would never be the same yeah thing. and 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 medical is one thing they are looking at oh by the way also they say not just a sub millimeter precision also high temporal resolution which means many frames per second so it is motion a heart in motion that kind of stuff is an example here um they talk about uh, machine have you ever seen that have either of you ever seen that live on um a, a, an ultrasound scan of a baby i've seen my own heart in an ultrasound scan. scan live which was oh very like weird. the 4d scans now just a regular mm. ultrasound but um i know they do 3d ultrasound now yes um mm, they're incredible and another another application that they talk about here is, for example, autonomous driving. So just imagine that car being able to look around a corner to see if a car is coming or if uh, some wildlife is jumping That'll out of the cool. forest. You know, then we wouldn't need all those five G networks everybody keeps telling us are making us sick. <laughs> <laughs> are they? <laughs> No, they're not. No, but they're let's they need the five G for the cars to talk to each other. Well, that's what five G's for, isn't it? Because like people yeah. don't need five. That's how they, they sold it to us, anyway. That's, that's... yeah, but so so mm -hmm. I th I thought five G was for for vehicles more than anything else. Okay, if, do, do you guys get five G? Because I when I go to London now, there's yeah. loads of five G in London. You can you can you can do things like watch YouTube in high def on a train that's moving at fifty miles an hour, or eighty kilometers an hour. Um, quite. That, how that enhances everybody's lives i'm not entirely sure but you can do it we live in the countryside we don't even have a bar of lte so oh dear there you go um let's hope nobody digs up your fiber then <laughs> we, we are maybe maybe if we're lucky we get fiber next year possibly um so so things are things are moving forward things are interesting and this and and while we don't have products yet that we can buy, I think it's the way this sounds is that okay, this is research now to turn something like this into a real product. I think we're at least either either we're the military or we're at least ten years away. Yeah, I think, the, I think so. But I think the car thing is interesting because if you if you sit in a car that has three sixty degree cameras. Yep. Uh, only line of sight so far only line of sight well well yes uh, yes except that some cars have you ever sat in a car where the front camera is right on the nose of the car and has like a 180 degree field of view so you can't see because as a driver of course you sit pretty close to the middle of the car not the front of the car so i ha i have seen it such that um you pull up at a, a let's say you're pulling up at a junction onto a main road a t-junction and you you can't see because it's a house or something like that and you can't see around the corner i have seen 3d cameras actually spot that but um maybe not maybe not on roads but yeah sort of moving around part you know parking structures and and you know round parking cars and stuff but like it's that. but it's not really looking around a corner it's from your perspective sitting in the car yes but the camera still needs line of sight too that is very true that is very at. true yes so yes it has, it, it has the effect for, for the driver though of being yes it feels like it Be, being yeah. being um be, in that context, I think this is a really interesting thing. Now, of course, what's going to happen is that uh, the moment non-line of sight or what was the other one? Beyond line of I sight. I said beyond. I think all all the stuff I've read here, um, it, it talks about non-line of sight. It's just some work, some uh, in my professional life, some work I've done in the past related beyond to Beyond line of sight sounds like sounds that. more like a marketing term, I guess. <laughs> Actually, it comes from the defence industry, um, and it refers to when you have to communicate across a battlefield, uh, right. when you have no line of sight to the vehicle or or people that you're trying to communicate to. So, uh, like over a hill, for example. Like like lidar now that is on a lot of these uh, in in research uh, pro 
autonomous vehicles. And it's very expensive. I'm pretty sure when this comes out, it won't be cheap either. So um, there will definitely be... Oh, and it probably going to start somewhere, though, right? But first, I think the first area where this is going to be st- going to start is with all the all the secret services, spy agencies. Yeah, Being able to look around absolutely. the corner. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and the come cameras. on, that's James Bond that's, stuff. They do two things. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's actually yeah. I could surveillance spies get all the good stuff, don't they? If you believe the mm. spy stories. <laughs> they do. So we we have a couple of more links uh, for anyone who's interested in reading more. About this in the mag in, in the in the publication Nature, there's a there's an entire uh, paper on that. Fast non line of sight imaging with high resolution and wide field of view using synthetic wavelength holography. Um, it's a pity that that Jeremiah is not here because he's our holography expert. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if they mm. did, if you read anything in your research, Chris, about uh, people using. Um, binocular cameras for this so that you, know you could use the parallax to to sharpen the images or, or improve the resolution is there any of that going on i haven't looked too deep into this but the fact that they end up with submillimeter precision and uh 3d means that they can extrapolate that from just the waves they get from do you know what i've noticed when i was looking through all these articles if you actually go through them copy and paste oh baby of course, they yeah, all have one source. <laughs> well, Seems that happens that a lot. That is what everybody is doing. Well, that happens a lot. <laughs> it does happen, yeah. yes. I so, would have liked to have found, you know, some more diverse stuff, but it all seemed to be pretty similar. Maybe there just isn't any more news at present, I don't know. This typically these they're, kind of they're all at it. I was reading something this week in in, in my professional again re- referring to my work. It, Same I was, here, it was to do yeah. with IT stuff, right? Te- technology stuff, computer technology stuff. Uh, and I read three or four articles, and they all said pretty much exactly the exactly same thing. The same. They changed. They don't a couple even bother words, to but, change. Yeah. But the, <laughs> well, yeah, even the the sections yeah. and the flow. So they you know. they tend to go back lazy, to like a, a single you know. paper somewhere. And uh, by the way, yeah. what we're looking at right now is here in Science Daily. I'm not sure who of you put this in here, but in Science oh, Daily, yeah, that, was... that was you, Imar. There it is. There yeah, it is again. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it says <laughs> that it uh, our, our current sensor prototypes use visible or infrared light, but the principle is universal. So they, like, it sounds like they, as, as many of these kind of things, start with very limited wavelengths and then mm. start to extend it over time. So. so do you think there's going to become like a whole new market in stealth technology that doesn't give off the wave, that doesn't reflect the wavelengths that, that these cameras would have, you know? So um, your you, one spy would have like a, a C round corners camera, and the other spy would have like a a, a black body suit that right that that, that doesn't it doesn't reflect any radiation at all. Isn't that what you would do anyway? Like uh, the, the, the whole I don't know, Chris. I'm not a spy. What do you? Do? The whole Mission Impossible stuff. Don't they? Don't they tend? To, yeah, don't, don't they, they tend to black wear black and balaclavas? Yeah. yeah. So. It, so. Anyway, we have we have uh, we have something on the horizon. I'm not sure how far the horizon is away, but uh, medical field sounds interesting. Autonomous driving sounds like a good application. Search and rescue is another one. Just being able to mm. find someone who's under rubble and just looking around corners there mm-hmm. seems like interesting. Of course, of these articles don't mention the whole spy angle of it, but. Those will probably well, be the first to. We ones. We know have about it. the spy. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's got to be other things. I like the the search and rescue one. Seems like a, a really good thing, especially yeah. you know, if you can see through materials in a, in a, in a way that is, yeah, as Ema said, is complementary to to heat. Um, yeah, that that could be really a powerful thing, couldn't it? An incredible thing. The medical stuff. We didn't talk too much about it, but the ability to 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 see like through people and and medically image stuff i guess is that is that it's different i guess to what um what does mri stand for is that magnetic resonance magnet resonance imaging yeah that's a different one they they have big magnets that start shaking your molecules in some way and that so this one looks like it, it, it might would be, be much less invasive than yeah. any of those other things wouldn't it like yeah i guess so mm. Anyway, I think um, yeah, let's let's revisit this in about five <laughs> years, maybe, and have a closer look again. Or maybe not. It seems like that you know 
the updates come kind of once a year like they yeah still it seems to just you know incrementally get better and better and better what they can do still so still it's, it's, uh, they they still need to productize it in some way and that takes years mm, and years so yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't worry. Well, <laughs> maybe five. I reckon yeah. the cars. I reckon the self-driving cars will be the, the real. You know that that's where it'll be applied first. That and, that could be very useful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because Because it's that last ten percent of stuff, close, isn't it? Because the self-driving it? cars at the moment they're probably they're quite good on the on the big roads mm-hmm. where everybody travels in the same direction. Slightly less good on small roads like where there's obstacles roads. to the, you know things like that. Mm-hmm. So. So all of these things could contribute to maturing that. Or maybe they're part of the the metaverse. I don't know. Well, do, well, how would you use one of these in the metaverse? I guess you wouldn't need one in the metaverse, would you? Because you probably don't need You could. Yeah, you would just be sitting on a kitchen chair, but you would be actually wearing a headset and driving a <laughs> Lamborghini or something. <laughs> <laughs> or not driving it. We're, we're, too, we're too too busy every all the time at the moment. We're teasing our big metaverse show that we haven't even started oh, that, planning yet. So. <laughs> That's it, actually. You'd be driving your, your Lamborghini in the metaverse because you're not allowed to drive a car in the real world anymore because oh, you're deemed too interesting. unsafe. Ooh. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Um, how about looking at some pics of the Wii? I will it. happily start with my own one, which is uh, it's photography related, but it is a different kind of photography. It's not related to this episode. It's a uh, it's the Worldview site by NASA. Which, if you are interested in what's going on on our planet, they have a lot of satellites around the on, around the Earth that are taking pictures constantly, and um, Earthview gives you access to those. You can dig into what's going on on our planet. It's not real time, but um, like when you started on the homepage, they have a whole bunch of tiles with different events. So here's like uh, 29 bushfires in Australia. So it zooms in there and and shows you these and you can uh, Mm -hmm. not just zoom in, but you have a slider at the bottom where you can uh, can change the time scale day by day so it's like a daily you can make a movie from these kind of things or impressive um there's a whole list of events going on right now so we have an iceberg a69b i've been talking Mm -hmm. about that in uh on on curiously polar on the, the other podcast that i do um there's an iceberg in the antarctic that is moving and you can follow that around here uh on on satellite pictures, so a ton of different things that you can That's see cool. from up there. And this mm-hmm. is if you if you have a few hours spare time. I mean, yes, no one has, <laughs> but uh, just in case you want to see stuff from from satellites, um, then if you want to take a higher view, you know, that's amazing. And it's it, specific yes. events with with yeah. a with a little timeline slider here. This this is this is. I find I this amazing brilliant that you can do specific events that they would curate for that. I think and that's... all NASA photography is public domain. Yeah. So whatever they put out, you can not just browse, but you can even use in your own projects. So Def- definitely one yeah, step yeah. closer, Chris, to your dystopian theory of photography mm-hmm. through archaeology. <laughs> It is sort of archaeology on a pretty large scale, though. It's, it's kind of what you detailed. mean when you talk about that, though, isn't it? That one day you know, you'll be able to, to just go anywhere and to see anything virtually, and and you know, place the, yourself yeah. somewhere in a, in a virtual in the in the world, and maybe the metaverse is going to take us there. <laughs> I don't want to go to the metaverse. Stop. Do you know what? I don't. I think I you know, I I'd rather switch it off. Right? I'd rather experience the real world. I mean, having said that, like I mm. said to you guys before we started recording, I've been in my garden today digging more lumps of concrete out of the ground. You know, um, you, 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 so, you sound a bit like someone around the time of when the telephone was invented. It's like I'd rather speak so, to my neighbor than giving him a phone call over a machine. So, so that's okay. So that's fair. That's a fair challenge, um, uh, and uh, I won't go into it now because it's not like I would not use it. It's just I would be selective and yeah, watch the, and you and have to be very the, discerning. The 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 the, the, uh, the word of of the moment these days is intentional, isn't it? I would it be comes intentional. Mm. About I think way. it comes down to utility. Mm. I send Monica a text message while she's upstairs. 
Cause yes, it, well, we do that we, um, from one end of the house to the mm. other. If if both, yeah, me and Emma are both in meetings, and she'll text me and say, "Are you going to pick the children up from school?" And sure. I'll say, text back saying, "No." <laughs> you, <laughs> well, are you going to pick the children up from school? And she says, "No." And then so, okay, well, one of us probably should go and pick the children up from school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, Imar, you brought us a video. Yeah, this is a TED Talk by this guy, David Lindell is his name, and he's all um, focusing on the use of this kind of technology for um, self-driving cars. And so this this is about the really... around-the-corner-looking thing. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. But it's like something like, I think he, I think he said 3 million frames a second. It's a high speed. Um, and if, if you, my Mike TV comment earlier, actually, when you scroll forward, you'll see him that he is demonstrating the camera by wearing a white suit. Um, and he's kind of jumping around and he shows how um, the, pro, you know, the photons are bouncing off this thing. They're picking <laughs> up this reflective suit that he's wearing. <laughs> the first, I just couldn't get my TV out of my head. <laughs> Here you but, go. Um, Here's yeah, your Willy Wonka. It's, it's very good. He, yeah. He ex- <laughs> it's all I could see. But yeah. They don't make uh, films like that anymore, do they? No, funny. they don't. Uh, that time of year, too. Awesome. We'll link that in the show notes. And then last but not least, um, Adrian, you have you have actually found the technology in daily use already. I have. I've got the productized version of being able to see round corners. Um, it is slightly lower technology solution, perhaps, than what we've been discussing today. Uh, but my pick of the week this week is a mirror on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly does the trick. They are great, you know. Anyone who lives in the country on a bendy road has one of those at the gate. Ah, yes, they there's are. that. Yes, so yeah. that's a good point. Yes, that does allow you to see around corners. <laughs> we, we. Absolutely. So, so what, uh, what, 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 why are they even trying to come up with something new there? We all really well, have it. Well, so, so, you know, the, these things, you know, these things will have you know, greater usage right now it's not at all like that myth that like the, the the russians took pencils to space or whatever is it it's it's <laughs> like yeah you know, it's they, they, there'll be real utility especially in a medical and uh thing here so i'm i'm glad to see this uh and i, I look forward to coming back next week and seeing the products that come from it um <laughs> Maybe not next week. <laughs> next week. Well, it's one of these things we put on the list to revisit one day. And uh, it'll certainly, if it ends up being proper products, it will certainly pop up here again in our Well, we are the future of photography and, after all, aren't we? So, <laughs> Well, and this is cer- certainly out there in the future, for sure. So uh, we'll keep an eye on these things for you and uh, track the news. And every now and then we'll have one of these weirdly technical weirdly <laughs> futuristic non-technical things. cool like anyway it. um we'll be back next week with uh with more and until then you can find us at the usual spots thank you for being here and uh everyone have a good one take care bye, bye. <laughs>